everyone? How's everybody doing today? Great. Great. Wonderful. Well, today we're going to do a PowerPoint twist. And I'm sure you're probably wondering, what does that mean? Well, the twist is the way I see things. I want everybody to repeat after me. The way I see things. The way, the way I, see I see things. things. And it's just my opinion. We're, we have three other PowerPoint presentations today, and this is just my personal opinion about PowerPoint. Now, I read this article here about a week ago, and it said that Microsoft estimates about 30 million PowerPoints are created every day. Now, you, I don't know how many of those actually go into presentation, but well, let's say 1, 10%. That's 3 million PowerPoints that occur every day. So, a long story made short, we have PowerPoint overload for the most part. <laughs> so, something to think about. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a PowerPoint fan. Now, I won't say I enjoy doing PowerPoint, but being that it is a very overused medium, I'll be honest, it's not my first selection. And when you get ready to do your next PowerPoint, think about, well, do you really want to do PowerPoint? Because you can do whiteboard if you choose, or you can do no PowerPoint at all. Just, just print the PowerPoint out and hand it out. That's one other way to do PowerPoint. Now, I'll say this, many times PowerPoint I believe takes away a little bit from the speaker. Now, if you're more comfortable with having more attention on you, then I'd say, you know, push the PowerPoint to the side and do your thing. But if you're not as comfortable, the PowerPoint will be just as fine. So something to kind of think about the next time you do a PowerPoint. Now, I have a question for you. What is the main focus of any presentation? What is the main focus, or what should be? the main focus? Speaker. Speaker? Audience? Anybody else? Content. We have some guests over here. What do you think, Renee? The topic. The topic? Well, Jerry hit the right one. Yes. All right. Let's give Jerry a hand. All right. Here's a quote that Les Brown said. A message in and of itself has no value. You give a message value once you consider who's doing the listening. So we have to always consider the audience. Anytime we are preparing a message, that should be our primary focus, is that audience and catering that message to that audience. So we must think about the audience at all times for the most part. Because once we put that focus on the audience, it takes the focus off of us. Many times we get nervous I'll tell you why we get nervous. Because we're worried about what's going on right here. We're worried about all this. We're worried about if we're sweating or if we got something on our face. We're worried about all this. No. We're about all this. The message is the most important and focusing on the audience is something kind of key. Now, I have another question for you. Tell me two things you should bring to every presentation. And the remote is not necessarily one of those. Two things we should bring to our presentations. When you get ready to do, all of us have done one, done presentations, PowerPoint. What should we bring? Sarah? Notes. Okay. Why is no right or wrong? Yourself. Yourself, that? Definitely. Yep. <laughs> 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 so, right? Ben? Ben? Water. Water? Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> what I think is really most important, we've got to bring energy. We have, we have to also bring belief in our message. Because many times what happens is we come up and people don't believe what we have and we're shaking and we're looking at the screen. If you believe in your message and you know that your message is important, bring that to your audience. They want energy. They want a message. They want you. Bring you. Bring the fullest expression of you when you give your message. Now, this is a question that I thought about a while back, just two questions. Who is the PowerPoint for? That's something I think about. Jerry, what do you think, what do you think? Who is it for? for both, actually, the speaker and the audience. Okay, anybody else? I think it's for the audience. For the audience, okay. I mean, you're supposed to. Convey your message. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I think it's for you, the speaker. It's their notes. Okay. All righty. I'm going to the second question. 
who is the who is the PowerPoint not for? That's a weird question. That's a weird question. I know. Okay, I'm going to explain this. As a presenter, the PowerPoint is for the audience, and it is not for the speaker. It's not for me. I should know what's up there. Not for me. And how many of us have been to that presentation where the speaker is just talking to the PowerPoint the whole time? Not engaging, just talking to the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is not anybody. The PowerPoint is not for the speaker. It's for your mind. And if you can avoid reading, you know, we've all had that with a reading straight word for word. Let the audience read it. They can read. They know about the PowerPoint. Now, what would you do in the event that your projector crashes? I know that was brought up a little bit earlier. What do you do? Turn the laptop around. Okay, what do you do? What do you do? You know what? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So what do you do? You move yeah. on. I like that. Anybody else? Yeah. Pam, any thoughts? Actually, it's actually happened at a training seminar where I was at, and they had no more light bulbs. The guy could not do the thing until he got light bulbs. So for two and a half hours, there were no PowerPoint presentations. He did it. That's it. Okay. There we go. We're warm. If your PowerPoint goes out, the key to that is this: you should know your material. Basically, you should be able to do the PowerPoint presentation without the PowerPoint. That should be your goal. So. If it goes down, that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to keep on rolling with this because there's a message that I want you to know. You keep rolling, but the key is as a presenter, you need to know your content, know your material before you get up there. Because I've seen people lose their place. If, let's say the projector goes down, and now they're not sure what to do. So know your points, know your content points before you get up and do your presentation. Now. Here are just some tips. I have a little bit more time to kind of keep your audience engaged. I'm a fan of asking questions. And I'm also a fan of asking questions by name. Why do I do that, Jamie? Keep our interest. Bingo. <laughs> I'm not going to let you fall asleep. That's not going to work. So if I call Raj out by name, Tariq's over there wondering, well, no. I better pay attention <laughs> because he might call me. OK. <laughs> Do your questions by name, because this way people's attention will stay. And engage the audience, have fun. I mean, if you make a comment, engage, have fun. Look people in the eye. Smile, like Raj always tells me, smile. <laughs> well, I gotta learn to smile. And don't be afraid to go off script. If Jamie makes a comment that I think is very interesting and I wanna go off, go off script, and then work your way on back to your so I know we talked about a lot today, but the main thing is to come up and have fun and always put your audience first. Because if you put your audience first and you feel passion about your subject, your audience 